was the day I invented time travel. I remember it vividly. I was standing on the edge of my toilet, hanging a clock. The porcelain was wet. I slipped, hit my head on the edge of the sink. And when I came to, I had a revelation, a vision, a picture in my head, a picture of this. This is what makes time travel possible. The flux capacitor. We are currently working on a close replica of a high voltage vacuum relay that was manufactured in California in 1950s. And one of the technology that we need to learn to accomplish this project is this junction of two metals. It's probably braced and we think it's braced by alloy of silver and copper. A small sample of bracing wire finally arrived after a month of waiting, so we are now able to make a quick test to see how it performs. To prevent oxidation of the parts we want to do the bracing under vacuum and the easiest option for us is to use a vacuum tube furnace. The alloy melted, but all the parts were heavily oxidized and that's probably because the pressure was too high and the time we kept it inside too long. So we decided to build a small chamber where we will be able to heat it quickly by induction heating. So the idea is to quickly pump down this small chamber to 10 to minus 6 millibar region and then heat the junction by induction heater so that the brazing wire melts and flow down connecting the two parts together.
despite using purging gas during the sealing of the H tube, we still get the digits oxidized. So we got the idea that it would be great to see how the gas actually flows inside the tube. So we set up a bottle with water and dry ice so that developed smoke that could be pushed through the whole seas and to simulate the gas flow. For the first test we used a standard tube and here you can see that the density of the fog in the left side of the tube is much thicker than on the right side which might indicate a problem with not enough purging gas among the digits. So we cut a hole in the anode cup with the idea that the hole could allow more of the gas flow straight into the assembly of the digit and this time we got much better result. The density of the fog in the area of the digits was way better than in the previous attempt. So we thought that we have a solution. If the smoke can fill the tube then the purging gas probably can fill the tube too and protect the digits from the oxidation. So we decided to take that tube with a hole in the anode cup and seal it. So I sealed the tube the usual way. First five minutes purging, then sealing the window, then closing the purging valve and annealing the tube. After this the digits were again oxidized, a little bit less in the area around the hole. That was after all this work that was not very encouraging. After studying the videos from the ceiling we found that the oxidation of the digits happens during the annealing phase where the purging gas is already closed. And the reason why we are closing the purging gas is that when the window is sealed to the envelope and we heat this edge, uh, the glass is completely molten here and any overpressure inside the tube tends to create a bubble here. So for this reason we need to close the valve, but uh, we get the idea that instead of closing the purging gas completely we will rather decrease the flow. I think such a test doesn't make much sense because if you imagine letting the purging gas flow from this side uh, then because all this section is already closed uh, the gas have to escape from the exhaust pipe so it will probably take the shortest path and it will go from here directly to the pipe so it will not even get among the digits so if there is any air left inside it will stay there and uh, purging gas at the decreased flow will have no impact on it. And at the same time, if you imagine that you just close the purging valve uh, and you anneal the tube while it's spinning, uh, the chance that air from outside will get inside and attack the digits is also very small. But we tried anyway. So let's look closer at the latest ceiling attempt. Here we have the purging phase and as you can see both the grid as well as the digits are perfectly silver. Here we are sealing the window. Here the window is already sealed, the holder is away and the purging gas flow is decreased. Uh, we still can see that the digits are perfectly silver. And this is an inning phase. Still no signs of oxidation anywhere. It's perfect. And this is the result. Completely clean digits without no oxidation at all. So it's exciting to have a solution for our last serious manufacturing problem. 
it's a bit frustrating because this solution is so stupid simple that we could find it earlier. Uh, never mind, we have a solution and I think that since the next batch we will be able to manufacture first real production tubes that will be used in the final installation.